All right, my friends. Bruce here. Well, this is where I'm at. I got another Kohler in here. This one's an MTD Craftsman. Um, I think I found a bag for this one in the in the boneyard, and uh, I just started working on it to the point where I. Uh, Screw some oil in the carp or primer gas, two-stroke fuel with a little bit of oil. Squirted that into the carb into the carburetor. Uh, pulled the rope a few times, no no bang, no fart, no nothing. So then I uh, put in a whole bunch more carb spray, and now I think it's flooded. I've got a screwdriver sticking in the carburetor just to let in a small amount of oxygen, and we're going to give it a go. I don't think it's going. I think I think it's hit something, or we have no spark. The more I pull it, the more compression it seems to have. So let's just do the do the D. And I'm looking for my 5/8 socket that's been ground down. Oh, there it is. Now I've got another unit on the pender lift right now. But we're just going to do a quick little spark check here. Oh! <laughs> so one reason why it's probably not firing up is somebody pulled off the spark plug lead, and I don't think it was me. We might see uh, we might see fire in action now. Somebody's had a look at this. I got this for free in one of those, uh, you know, uh, city buy and sell sites and give away, obviously. Aha! Okay. That helps. <laughs> Now I'm going to try and get it going and keep it going. But it sure is revving hard, eh? Like El Maximo. That just could be because I've been squirting so much crap in it. So I'm going to get my knee pillow. Lift this up. Put this down. Clamp the bale. And we have to rush around and start squirting fuel right away. It went from a pile of junk ready to go to the dump to a high revving engine and then I noticed that the throttle arm was absolutely stuck so I, I wiggled and jiggled it and forced it with my screwdriver and then it was, it was revving a little high so I just took this tab and bent it down a bit and now we have some throttle action. Look at that. So you could use that lawnmower tomorrow. And I'm sure there are guys out there, if you're lucky, blow the dust out of the air filter, put this bag on, 
and sell it for 80 bucks. But that's not me. But I'm thrilled I got this going. Now everything seems really gummy. But hey, let's try and start it again. Which I love when the plan comes together. It's running about 400 RPMs too high, but uh, I bet you now when I uh, take the carburetor cover off, we'll find you know just a few things sticky. Maybe somebody was playing with the governor. We just don't know. But now, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's power washing time. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, guys, I want you to look down here. You see this big nut on here? That doesn't quite look right to me. That should be a... This looks like a nut that would hold on a rewind. And the bolt looks a little shaky too. But it's holding it on. I think somebody adjusted the governor on this thing to get it to run and then they couldn't get it to run right. We'll do that. It might be fun if, that, if I have to, right? That's the kind of thing you don't play with unless you need to. I'm going to just see what the grassoline looks like here. Looks kind of old, eh? Should we just replace it? I'm thinking. Wrong container. This container will work. So now you guys can watch me spill some gas. I'm going to take the gas out before I pressure wash it. I have no idea why. Quite a bit, too. You're not going to see this. tank out once in a while. That's not dangerous washing your floor with gas, is it? Looks like the governor might be able to be adjusted below 3300 if I can reduce the tension on that one spring. If not, we'll do the uh, maximum left or maximum right on the governor shaft. That might be kind of fun to show you. But, you know, sometimes they're, they've been diddled with so much they're uh, almost impossible to get working. But we'll get there. So now I'm just going to pressure wash these guys like I said earlier. And uh, thanks for watching up to this point and we'll, we'll get a nice clean lawnmower out of the deal. Thanks. Alright, let's have a look at this one. Now, look up. Now, we started this one up. It revved its brains out. And what this looks like here, this bolt might be right, but this, I think this, uh, I think this, Governor shaft has been fiddled and diddled. I don't like adjusting them, but we've taken. Well, maybe it's just. Let's just get some carb spray first, right? And see if we can get some more action on that shaft.
A little bit. I think it needs to be adjusted. I haven't done one for a while. Let's do it. All right, my friends. Full throttle is back this way. So we're going to try this again. We're going to bring the shaft out a little bit if we can. I've actually had to sometimes cut this to spread it a bit. There, that should help. So full throttle is back this way. And now we want to go the opposite way. Although it might not make any difference. But it might. Okay, full, full throttle back this way. That's good. Put the carburetor. The fingers are in the way. And then we'll go the other way. We'll go that way first. Make sure nothing moves. Good. And we'll try to start it up again. Put the gas cap on. Strange deal on it. Okay, I'm just going to yank it. Okay, it does not want to start, so we'll give it a little tease just to see. I shouldn't make it fire. Let's see what it does. So anyway, yes, that's it. So full throttle, one way or the other with that adjustment nut, and it only moves a quarter of an inch. So now, up to this point, we haven't spent a dime, right? Now we can do a tune-up. And let's have a look at the, uh, at the underside of that, uh, the underneath of the bowl in the carburetor. I just have to have a look. The gas lines are soft. And I'm just going to take my super duper 10 millimeter wrench. Okay, here we go. Can 
Can I, will I be able to get that off of there? Yep. Perfect. Well, it's not that bad, right? But I did want to, I did want to uh, clean it out a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to use a tiny bit of seal wool. I like seal wool, but you have to make sure you don't get any of the pieces in the gas. Eh? There, that's pretty good. Now we're going to just throw this, throw this uh, card bowl back on here if we can. And then see if we still get uh, 3,270 RPMs. Put the clamp on the bale. I tell you, the more I use this thing, the better it gets, right? Bad Uncle Bruce left the back door open, the hatchback open on the Kia last night, and it was on there when I got up today. <laughs> so I'm just doing a little battery charging the quick way. Right now it's taking uh, 12 amps, 14 and a half volts. So, so here we are working on the. Polar. If it starts up, we're golden. And then we just have a tune up and some pretties to fix, right? Let's see what happens. It's got new gas, tank's been drained. Nope. We might have to clean the carburetor. Yeah. See if the choke is completely closed first. Oh, it might be the, it might be this thing. Okay, let's jack her up a little bit. Peek the out from the choke. And the choke is sort of kind of almost. Let's pull that out. Not closed all the way. Now it should fire right up. Quite right. Sorry, I got in front of you there again. Now, tools. Ten millimeter. First thing I'm going to do is check the spark plug. It had the spark plug disconnected, didn't it? Probably, it probably has a a torch plug in it. We'll see. Oh. Oh, it's running a little lean, actually. NGK. Yay! BPR6E. That's cool. Plug looks pretty good, actually. And it's running a tad lean. Do I wash that carb? I think I do. So I gotta put some juice on the barbecue. I use the side burner on the barbecue to heat up the juice. So I'll be about a half an hour, guys. Not to you, though. Okay, let's get this carburetor off of here. I don't wanna say excuse me to a camera. That's my best friend. I talk, and he doesn't answer. Never complain, never argues. And then when I up upload the videos, Sometimes they complain. So two torque screws to get this 
uh, bracket off of here. And then the throttle cable, just like a Honda, exactly like a Honda actually. And the springy, spruy screw, and that should pull right off of there. Ooh, I got a broken gasket. Son of a gun. I'm sure I got one of those around here. I've parted out a few of these. It is just a choke gasket though, right? Not the end of the world. It has to seal to the air filter. And then we need a pair of pliers to disconnect said fuel line and a hemostat. Stop! You were waiting for that, John. You know, this mower's not that bad. The last one of these I did, which you guys did, you saw my neighbors uh, hit a stump and it didn't break anything but the blade. Oh, I gotta get the uh, sink removal gas line pliers here. Because you don't want to shorten this, you don't want to shorten this hose, eh? Now that is a beautiful thing. Look at it. You don't need to see me take this apart. I've taken apart a lot. The little fancy little bracket is still on here. Now let me show you that because that's important. If you didn't see my video on the Kohler choke bracket. Let me get it on right. Okay, so this is the Kohler choke bracket. In. <laughs> and then back up and around and that's how it goes. You see that? Isn't that goofy? And then this goes to the lever that actuates it from the temperature control. Yes, from the temperature control part of the choke. There's two choke activators on here. There's a temperature control and there's a wind vane. One is for quick reaction and one is for slow reaction. Let's go. See you later. We're just going to clean this carburetor. Okay, FYI, I'm taking the little diaphragm off of here. That uh, runs on a vacuum that pulls on the choke too. Okay, this is interesting, you guys. I'm going to suck on this hose. and I just tightened these three screws because I wasn't getting any motion on that. This is a diaphragm pull. Now it is. Cool, eh? No, I've got a new way of doing that. Let's go see how warm our water is. Come with me. Okay, so you guys have all seen carburetor cleans up the wazoo, right? So here's my water. It is 71 degrees. And I, I make my water 60 degrees in the washer. So we'll dump that in. Now there's a tremendous amount of heat loss going on there right now, guys. Okay, so we plug her in. Turn her on. And we're going to set the heat to 60, and it's going to climb. Right now it says 55, and we're already down to 67 degrees, 66. So we're good. We can start cooking our stuff. And that's really annoying to listen to, so I'll just put, put the stuff in the basket. I'll put the float underneath the bowl. I'll get right with you in a minute. Okay, this is interesting. This is the pilot jet. It should squirt through the top. You block one end and it doesn't. So we'll see what happens after we wash it. The emulsion tube and the jet right there. If you can see that, I don't know. We put that in our basket and there's nothing left in our basket. Hey, should we do the plug? No, it doesn't need to. That's going overboard. So here we go, Dunkaroo. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water. I carry a supply of water in here just for these exact things, right? So that's all the water we need. That's about how much I lose at a time. Now that should make our water temperature almost exactly 60 degrees. Alrighty. Yeah, well, 
temperature it shows now. Sixty-five. Perfect. So I'll turn the heater off. Oop. And it should jump. Alright my friends, we're gonna try that again. You can see it's actually squirting out the center. Thanks. Put the back, I'm going to put this back together again. You don't need to watch that boring procedure. Look at the plug, not me. I cleaned it, and it's actually a NGK DCPR60, which is probably the original plug for that Kohler because it's an older model. The new Kohlers come with a torch plug, and we know where that comes from, right, Kenny? All right, my friend. Uh, I think you're looking a little high, aren't you? Carb's been cleaned in the carb cleaner. It's got the sharpened blade. Uh, we've got the diaphragm on the carb working a little bit better. The choke's not sticking anymore, or the throttle's not sticking anymore. And uh, the clean gas. No air filter yet, but that's. Uh, we'll get that right away here. See if this runs good. And we're going to give her a pull. Okay, let's just pull the uh, menstruator kit back in. Okay, one more pull. So it starts when it's cold and it starts when it's half warm. So that's her. I would like to find some red paint just to touch that up. That would look better, wouldn't it, down there? Here, here, and here. But she's a runner. Yay! Huh, well I finally got this one done. Uh, I did find a little bit of paint right there on the edge. Just, just so the metal wasn't showing through for two reasons. So it wouldn't rust any more than it has. It didn't rust through, and and make it look a little bit better, because re you know red's always the one, right? I'm starting to like these coolers. Although this is a, I think this one's a domestic cooler. <laughs>